Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Thursday, February 20th, 2020. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the broad markets for subscribers. This is uh, mostly a follow-up to the uh, video I did mid-session today in that which we covered a lot of different uh, commodities, things that we're trading now, precious metals and oil, and natural gas, everything else out there. Uh, and some agricultural commodities, but I also want to do an update on the indexes because we have some notable developments worth mentioning. And that would be, all right, so let's just start out here with this QQQ 60 minute chart and do a quick recap for those that uh, uh, I'll probably make this a public video on the YouTube channel since we're covering general market analysis, not getting into the trade ideas here. We had a breakdown the other day right there, 60 minute uptrend line, little rising wedge pattern. Let me draw it out for you here uh, in QQQ. We did have a divergent high at that point, but as I said, divergence is not a sell signal, but we did get the breakdown there in a the back test. But from there, we corrected sideways, and uh, in the recent updates, I said a upside break above 235 would be near-term bullish. Did that yesterday, gapped up, and then built on those gains. So we had about a 1% lift uh, from the top of that uh, support zone, or resistance, uh, or trading zone, if you will, sideways trading range. And uh, then we turned around and we failed that today. So as I said in this morning's update or yesterday when we did it, all it did is simply move the needle here, meaning extended the divergence, uh, still kept them very much intact. And they're starting to play out now for a, a reversal. You can see, uh, again, divergent high right there. I'll get to SPY in a second, same thing. So earlier today, we moved down sharply, had an impulsive leg down, uh, took out during that midday video I said we're trading right here that 233.66 support and I said what you need to do to get a more downside we're going to need to see that taken out because like I always say support is support until unless taken out you don't count uh, if you're trading on a 60 minute chart that is just a quick uh, leg down and a little momentum field overshoot all that really matters are your 60 minute candle closes so we snapped back above as I was doing the video right back on to that 233.66 held it uh, and so that's the story. That's where we close the day. That is still the support level to watch now, and 235 is still resistance. Uh, somebody in the trading room asked, would 235 stop today's advance? Yeah, my answer is yes, and it did. Uh, certainly right there, the high of the day was uh, 234.95 right there. So close enough for government work. So that's the story. We're sandwiched between support and resistance, and there are, as I uh, pointed out, uh, a follow up. I put a post under today's um, the the mid session video. I posted an updated chart earlier that QQQ had now set up in a nice bear flag uh, continuation pattern. Okay, and here's that chart from earlier today, about an hour before the close. There it is. This is what a bear flag pattern looks like. Uh, I'm not sure if you can make it out on the video. There's three components. It's a continuation pattern. Uh, first part is a sharp leg down, the initial decline, followed by a formation of a flag. You want to see that on declining volume, which we did. And then uh, the third component, of course, it's just a like anything else, any chart pattern, bullish or bearish, it's a potential pattern, in this case a potential bearish pattern, because these are continuation patterns, meaning a continuation of the trend pending a sell signal which would come on an impulsive break uh, below the pattern and that could come on a gap down tomorrow or it may not come at all uh, that again was the earlier chart here's where we close the day and so this is it this is what to look for tomorrow uh, pop above here starts to also stretch the symmetry of this pattern you know you want the flagpole you certainly want the flagpole longer than your flag and it's getting stretched here and uh, if you do break down you want to see it impulsive so uh, again the flag is so close to this 233.66 ish support we'll call it ish you know it's not exactly there are a couple of little dips below it there that you want to see that taken out and uh, the nice thing about it the flag roughly measures down to uh, take the measured target for a bear flag pattern. Uh, you take the flag pole, which is the distance of the initial leg down, add it to the top of the flag before uh, the highest point before it breaks down. And that's the same target I've been highlighting uh, last week or so here since we had this divergent high, 233 or 23033. Uh, you know, roughly, these are unadjusted targets, the actual support level, I expect a reaction, and then ultimately down here to 230, 224.70, 
and that and or whatever comes in first you have a uptrend line here roll back all the way to the october 3rd lows been harping on that one for a while uh it hasn't been visited in some time by that i mean you know when you have a pretty well defined trend line uh even if you're in a bullish trend that trend is going to continue every now and then you come back and you visit that trend line so maybe it's time uh, maybe not I think so but we'll see like I said there's the, the easy money has been made in um, you know individual stocks commodities uh, various asset classes uh, sector ETFs and things like that uh, but now we could uh, like I said we could be looking at the first you know and it's, it's what this market's been doing it's in a solid uptrend and every now and then you get set up with these 60 minute divergent highs negative divergence I don't know where that line went there and you get these pullbacks that range anywhere from three to four percent or so uh, and this one you know off that recent high if we get down to that 22470 and or trend line target you're talking give or take about five percent total from the highs and that's still a pretty decent drop from where we're at now uh, but again first things first that would be the sell signal to come if we get it tomorrow and if we don't we'll then we'll just see where the chart's set up see if these levels continue to act as support 233.66 uh, if we get back above 235 does that act as support um, but that's that's where it looks like we're most likely headed now and of course the backdrop I haven't added that as an official short trade on the site we just the market has had such a resilient bid lately um, can it just a little bit more before swing trading as I said active traders certainly if you want to take a quick shot there uh, you know for a quick pullback trade uh, certainly looks objective if you put your stops a little above that level I just said of what was it 230 235 or so uh, right here you have spy almost identical looking chart we'll roll back here a little bit you can see the wedge pattern the negative divergence everything like we had back here negative divergence at the high divergent high breakdown of the wedge or the primary trend line back test and that was the biggest drop we had in a while in spy that will ended with a you got it divergent low bullish or positive divergence set up this rally divergent high wedge breakdown and back test we've been moving sideways since bouncing off this 335.50 level and when I did the video earlier today that's right where we were so I said we had a you know strong momentum fueled overshoot down kiss that 334 support 334.16 or so bounce back and uh, said we need to see a solid 60 minute close below and we never got it so we we held that support and just like QQQ uh, we started uh, potentially flagging Again, this one's getting a little long in the tooth, but the day is over now, and I'm, this is showing after our trades here, so we might have an extra candle in there for today. Uh, but let's see what happens tomorrow. So again, impulsive leg down, a little flagging type action. Uh, need to take out, keep it very simple. We need to take out today's lows to get a really nice sell signal. Of course, you know, we could take out 335.50 uh, again, then you have that 334 support. Uh, and then uh, all these are potential target support levels and just looking at this my comparable target here for spy uh, should we get those sell signals you know by the, with the breakdowns of the flags uh, would be uh, about 328.40 and that would represent from where we're at right now about a two and a half percent drop that's why I said nothing nothing major at this point uh, could certainly morph into more as I always say, the charts are dynamic, and so is my analysis. So let's see what happens there. And then uh, a few small cap traders, IWM, same story here. And this is a 60-minute chart. Uh, you know, usual stuff. Get these divergent highs, divergent highs. You get the corrections to follow. That drop was about two and a quarter. This one from high to low after the divergent high was about six percent. Now we have a divergent high. You had your uh, trend line break there. That was your sell signal the other day and uh, sometimes you get the sell signal and that's it one and done never look back and sometimes well it's not on this one but I showed you on spy and some others sometimes you get a breakdown and then you kick back rally that can either back test the trend line from below or bring you up to a marginal new high so in that case that's what we did here breakdown we hit this support right here you have a support zone we hit the bottom of that support zone right there bounced up put in another divergent high extended the existing divergences and so if QQQ and SPY break those flags and break those price support levels just below, uh, IWM will most likely go down with it. And to really get this one going to the downside, you're going to have to take out that recent low right there, about 166.34. And um, any target, these are all potential targets. And as I said in the video earlier today, so a lot of people don't short. 
Uh, and a lot of people are looking to buy the dip because the trend's been up. And, and so these are levels that I lay out that uh, you could certainly step in and buy the dip if you're bullish. Uh, just depends. Do you want to buy the early dips? Do you want to wait a little longer? Uh, or do you want to short it down here and then reverse and go long? There's a lot of lot of options to do. But these are these are the levels that stand out to me as where we, we're likely to get reactions. That's IWM. Uh, let's glance at the futures just for you futures traders and we'll wrap it up. I'm going to zoom in a little tighter here. Before I do that, before I zoom in, let me just show you. Here's a tr primary trend line right here on NQ. And then that 93, what is that, 93.18-ish, 93.19, that is uh, my, my near-term pullback target. Again, if we can get some uh, the next sell signals. And that's going to come if and when. Uh, well, I already covered NQ or QQQ, what we want to see there. But for NQ... This is the number right now to me, 95.25. Uh, you have several reactions here, and it's kind of setting up in this broadening wedge pattern right there, ascending broadening wedge pattern. And that's either way, that's a decent horizontal support. So uh, and we need to take that out. 90 break of 95.25, especially an impulsive convincing breakdown, should take us down there. That gives us about 2.8% about above that, that level right now, maybe a little higher. Yeah, about 3, closer to 3%. Uh, downside there and again 9318 with the intersecting uptrend line as support are uh, you know potential near-term pullback targets for uh, NQ uh, and there's of course the divergence and everything else again same stuff uh, simple here you had negative divergence there at that high divergent high swift drop and then we continued on bouncing off this uptrend line like that and there's a close-up zoom in on those levels for you right there. Our ES, for you ES traders, the S&P 500 E-minis were a little tighter on the time frame here. This is going back to the January 31st low right there. Uh, also point out the time that was a divergent low, positive divergence, which is bullish right here. You can see prices came, in, came down during that correction right here. Uh, we were in a near-term downtrend for a little while there making uh, lower lows and lower highs and then that ended with positive divergence which was the fuel or the catalyst for this rally up and so what that did is it terminated in this bearish rising wedge pattern right here negative divergence and we broke down below the wedge hit this 330 uh, 33 54 ish pretty decent support level and that's the level I'm focused on right now I think that's the most important level for ES or one of the, the first near-term support level I should say uh, and then we also inched up made a very slight marginal new high and all that did is just move the needle on the divergences meaning it extended the divergences they were still very much intact and still are uh, so we had that swift leg down today and if we pull in a little tighter here uh, you can see ES it's stretching a little bit again it's not the ideal flag scenario but it's certainly a potential flag or at least you know you have the impulsive leg down a snapback rally and you do have some resistance you can see resistance about right here minor resistance but uh so if if we reverse uh another break below this uh, 3353 ish level and especially below today's lows because you have support and the support just below it about 3337 that should open the door up for uh you know more downside probably coming into about right here 32 we'll round up call that 3300 call that um uh an ideal you know near term pullback target for ES right there and you can see a lot of a lot of reactions on that level there <clears throat> And then finally, RTY, this is the uh, Russell's, Russell 2000 small cap uh, ETF. So uh, if you, you either trade IWM or you can trade, uh, if you trade futures, this is the one you'll use. Or you can use the mini contract, uh, which is M2K. Uh, it trades on the same price levels, just uses a smaller leverage factor. And uh, this one, what, what stands out, it's, it's, cho it's choppy and sloppy. This is a sloppy looking chart. We did have a divergent high right there, uh, negative divergence, and you can see it this high. And just like everything else, I just covered like the large caps. And we broke down and back tested, and we've kind of been grinding around some, you know, in this sloppy range really for a while here. Uh, so that's that's the number right there. You can see these recent lows. Uh, lower that line just a bit because we've overshot them with these swift, you know, pull but these quick pullbacks. You get these little momentum field overshoots. So I'm going to tweak that line to about give or take. We'll call it 1670. 
that's a level 1673 really if that cracks that should open the door for more downside there and again you want to look at them all together watch ESNQ QQQ spy uh, the more that break those support levels the more uh, the higher the chance we'll get that next correction uh, otherwise that's uh, you, you know we're not far off the previous highs there's not a lot of resistance overhead uh, for this one to pop if it wants to but uh, like I said, for now, there's quite a bit kind of pointing downside, and I think we're ready for the, uh, you know, the next drop, uh, even if it's within a larger uptrend. You get these corrections along the way, they're tradable, and uh, you can see, you know, pullbacks to support, especially if you can have additional confirmation, like in this case, positive divergence. That's where you look to cover those shorts and go long. We'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great day.